What is new with Professor Kaku these days? Well, you know, this past weekend, something happened which really disturbed me, and that is the sun is having this temper tantrum, and it's getting worse and worse. Oh, you know, we had five solar flares erupt last week, two just in the past weekend. Uh, NASA satellites uh, were just overwhelmed by the size of the flare that came out of the sun. Uh, two two, two uh, flares came out of the sun on uh, Friday and Saturday, and we're headed toward the uh, 11-year sunspot cycle maximum now. And the, the fear is that one of these solar flares could hit the Earth, in which case all hell could break loose. And, it's it's uh, just a matter of time, isn't it? It's a matter of time. You know, we've had a big one about 150 years ago in, in 1859. Uh, we had a huge uh, solar flare that hit the Earth. Back then we only had telegraph wires, but even they were shorted out. And uh, you could read the newspaper in Cuba at night by the light of the northern lights, the aurora borealis, as far south as Cuba. And from that, we physicists can recalculate how big that solar flare of 1859 must have been. If we were hit with another one like that, it would pry our satellites, communications would go down instantly, power plants would be shorted out, and in a worst case, remember, this is a worst case scenario now. That's right. We physicists believe that it could be 20 times worse than Hurricane Katrina. Oh, my God. So imagine 20 uh, Hurricane Katrinas ravaging uh, the Earth simultaneously. And you can begin to estimate the kind of damage you can get if there's a direct hit from one of the solar flares. And, uh, you know, we're headed toward the maximum. Uh, More and more flares are going off the sun. We had another big one last month, by the way. So far, we've dodged the bullets. So far, we've been able to miss the solar flares. But these solar flares are like bullets. Um, sunspots are like rifles. Think of rifles shooting, shooting bullets into outer space and missing mm-hmm. the Earth, because, of course, outer space is quite big. But one of these days, one of these solar flares is going to hit the Earth, like what happened in 1859, and then all hell could break loose. Yeah, if it's the right size and it hits us on a direct angle, or you know, we, we are in trouble and we haven't insulated the grid, uh, ev- everything could go down. I'll tell you what concerns me too, Mitch, is mm-hmm. what happens if the power goes out? What about all our nuke plants? And we won't have the ability to, you know, you know, they will melt down, won't they? Yeah, take a look at what happened in Japan. You know, the, the backup power generators were in the basement. You can't think of anything worse, any worse place to put a generator than in the basement of a building. It was flooded almost immediately by the tsunami. And so the reactor almost instantly was dead in the water. They had no power. And because they had no power, there was no safety systems. And then three, we had three simultaneous core meltdowns in Fukushima. Plus, the uranium actually liquefied. Liquefied. We've never seen a totally liquefied core before. First time in history. But the Fukushima reactor actually melted totally. And so we could have lots of these around the country if there's a power blackout because of a solar flare. Simultaneously, we, we, lose, we lose pump activity, we lose backup power, we lose the ability to control the control rods. It would be a nightmare. And, and how long? That, uh, well, it only takes uh, a few hours for a core meltdown to get off the ground. Yeah. And by the way, at the Fukushima, you may ask yourself a simple question. If the core melted completely, then how come we didn't have a China syndrome? How come there wasn't an explosion that blew mm-hmm. the roof off like Chernobyl? And the reason is that in Fukushima, one of the workers disobeyed orders. He was under a direct order not to flush the core with seawater, because that would destroy the core. The utility thought they could re- uh, revive the reactor still. They had illusions about that. But he disobeyed orders. He made the only correct decision during the first few days. He flooded the reactor with seawater, and he stopped the devastation of northern Japan. He's a national hero. He is. And he, he disobeyed may, orders. He may have saved many, many lives. Oh, definitely. And we could have something similar if we lose power uh, in the United States or, you know, uh, around the planet Earth. If there's a gigantic solar storm, if there's a hurricane from hell or from outer space. Now, we physicists went to Congress last year, and we asked Congress for a few hundred million dollars, that's chump change, to reinforce our power plant, to build a backup grid, to make our satellites so that we could shut them down in case of a major flare, or maybe even have safety systems on the next generation of satellites. 
And we got nothing. Congress oh. just laughed at us. But, you know, we're the physicists of this country. We're the American Physical Society. We're the organization of physicists in this country. And we said to Congress that these are rare events, maybe once in 100 years, once in a 200-year event. But it's inevitable. It's inevitable that one of these bullets is going to hit the Earth like what happened 150 years ago. And when that happens, it's going to be worse than Katrina. It, it's an insurance policy. Why would they not jump all over this? Well, they said things like, well, you know, times are hard and, you know, the probability of an event is low. But, you know, power blackouts have happened because of sunspot activity in Quebec, Canada, for example, and in, in South Africa. Uh, certain cities uh, were hit with solar flares, but they were not a direct hit. They were like a grazing blow to the earth. And uh, we've had power blackouts. Now, see, here's the problem. We're very young in the space age. We've only had experiences with these sunspot cycles for only a few cycles because, you know, Sputnik only went up in 1957. We haven't had experience, but these solar flares have been going on for billions of years. But we never had electricity for billions of years. We've only had electricity for 100 years. And so we have no experience with one of these things. And so it's just like hurricanes. You know, people think that, yeah, hurricanes are bad, but they're very rare. So why bother to prepare for them? Then one day it hits you. And then you lose $50 billion, like in Hurricane Sandy. Yeah, I, I think it's foolish that they're not doing this, Mitch. They should have jumped all over your proposals, and that it should have been implemented right now. We, sh we should be building infrastructure right now, insulating the grid, protecting our power plants. Uh, it, it's going to bite us one day. I just I can feel it. That's right. And, you, you know, you can imagine the chaos. I'll, if all of a sudden we have power blackouts simultaneously across the country, no rescue crews are going to come in from neighboring cities because they, too, will be knocked out. So you're not going to see ambulances and fire trucks from neighboring cities to, to take care of us in case of a power blackout. And then food is going to rot in refrigerators, you know, as what happened with Hurricane Sandy. It only takes a few days for food to rot. And new fruit is not going to come in from the outside because there is no outside. And so food riots are going to start in a few days. Because people realize that uh, there's no food to eat because all the food is rotten because there's no electricity. And so you can imagine the kind of chaos you're going to have. Now, here in the Northeast, we had Hurricane Sandy. But, you know, we got relief from the outside. You know, the rest of the country was not paralyzed. That's right. Uh, the airports were up and running in a few days. And so shipments of food, trucks can come in. But can you imagine what happens if there's no outside? That if they, too, are hit simultaneously with one of these solar flares? And, you know, like I said, we're headed for a solar maximum now. Uh, in just a few months, we'll hit the peak of this solar cycle. And so the temp temper tantrums that we had last week will be multiplied in the coming weeks. And there'll be more and more newspaper reports, uh, especially from NASA, monitoring the sun. Because we never used to do this before, by the way. We never used to monitor these things. Now we monitor them because now we begin to realize, oh, my God, this yeah. could really be a big one. Now it's scarce. I wonder what the Mayans really knew, Mitch, you, when they talk about the Mayan calendar end date. I wonder if it was truly going to be some kind of solar event. Well, I don't know. All I know is that the laws of physics tell us that this happens every 11 years. Uh, the reason for that, by the way, is that the North Pole and the South Pole of the sun flip every 11 years. Uh, because the sun spins, it sort of like winds up its magnetic field lines, like winding the windings of a clock. If you wind the, the windings of a clock too much, it's springs open. It pops That's out at right. you, right? That's what happens every 11 years. When the sun spins, it winds up its magnetic field lines, like winding up the windings of a clock. And after 11 years, it can't take it anymore and goes boing, 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 boing off it goes. <laughs> and, and goes north-south flips. And so we have a pole shift of the sun every 11 years. And this has been going on, of course, for billions of years. But we didn't have a space program back then. <laughs> we didn't point. have power grids back then to worry about it.